The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 120 Inspection 3 The shock in the surveillance room was palpable as the lid of Gerardo's crate hit the floor. The camera at a perfect angle to observe as Starlight and Maple leaned up, peering into the box. Selma looked as if he had fallen from Maple's brick drop a second time in a row, while Howe's wings shot out in excitement nearly knocking Sharpie over who was frowning in confusion. Gerardo merely sagged. How? What? He stammered, watching the camera's dim teal lighting and blurry resolution as indefinite shapes hovered out of the box and into the air, Starlight and Maple both rummaging eagerly. What were they thinking? After a solid minute of watching in rapture, Maple withdrew from the crate, clutching something vaguely round and sparkly that seemed to command her and Starlight's attention. Several more words were exchanged, and then it abruptly disappeared. Immediately, the rest of the objects removed from the crate flew back into it, and the lid hammered itself back into place. As Maple and Starlight forced open the door and exited, nobody stepped up to change the camera. Instead, Selma hissed and growled, face contorting so heavily that his mane clung more tightly to his skull. I he abruptly stood up, stalking toward the room exit. Excuse me, I need to adjust some plans. Swoosh! Jordan recovered far faster than he and with a mighty wing stroke soared across the room, landing in the doorway and cutting Selma off. I think not, he demanded, wings remaining spread in obstruction. Is this not precisely why Herman demanded that you accompany me at all times? To ensure you wouldn't run off and alter something the moment I make a discovery? Out of my way, Griffin, Selma growled, horn lighting. We both lose if the contents of those crates escape, if you haven't forgotten. What happened to getting your important reward? He scuffed at the ground as if preparing to charge. No, Gerardo forcefully countered. You'll send your army to collect them, and I cannot permit any more harm to befall my friends. On this, I will not budge. Selma seethed, but didn't teleport or attack. I told you what would happen if those crates were tampered with. Would you really risk something so monumental? Hey, um, how lifted a forelimb? I don't actually need to be here, so want me to go find your pals and give them a little old heads up? You certainly have a knack for running into us, Gerardo breathed, preparing to take a risk that would have been almost unfathomable several minutes ago. If you truly mean that you wish to make amends with me, Find my friends and warn them that the defense force may still be pursuing them. Hurry. How gaped, then beamed, then grinned a stupid grin, saluting heavily with his feathers. I will not fail you, brother bird. With a powerful flap, he scooted past Selma, who did nothing to try to stop him and soared down the fortress corridor. With an angry flash, Selma's horn glowed brighter, and an icy blue shield mushroomed out, settling around him in Gerardo like a dome. Soundproof, he explained, voiced nevertheless at a whisper if it was far calmer than his features. You caught on faster than expected. Impressive. What? Gerardo whispered back, brow furrowing in confusion. Whatever do you... Summer's face remained perfectly serious, inches from Gerardo's own. Keep your fighting face on. This room is under recorded surveillance as well. Gerardo was too taken aback to respond, though he still managed to comply, listening as hard as he could for the unicorn's next word. Here's a new plan, Selma growled, teeth gritted and eyes hard. Here's a new plan, Selma growled, teeth gritted and eyes hard. I've sent the Akiakis on a missive informing them the crates have arrived. They are sending someone to complete plan B, who will be bringing your reward. This has already happened. Understood? Indeed, Gerardo growled back. He couldn't tell if Selma was being honest or telling him a lie that must be perpetuated at all costs, but at that moment, it didn't matter. Excellent. Now... Selma's face didn't move as he spoke. My hoofs must be innocent in this matter for this heist to work. It is your responsibility to buy your friends as much time as they need to take what they stole. And I know they stole something and get somewhere we will never, ever find them. Continue your inspection. Stall as much as you can because the moment I'm free, I will have no choice but to hunt them down with every resource available. The shield dropped before Gerardo could respond. You know, Sharpie sighed from the console, ears twisting backwards at the sound of magical dissipation. A less cynical me would try to arrest you for assaulting a diplomat right there. 
Now, I'm just wondering why I'm the only one of you idiots who cares about what happens to these poor girls. Giorno stepped back to the console, which was focused on a ponyless view of the crate storage room with the elevator. Where are they? he queried, tilting his head and trying to solidify his composure. I've lost track. Sharpie sagged, flitting between several different cameras. That room isn't completely covered, so I can't follow them anymore. Focus on the elevator, Selma drone, standing to her other side and not looking at Gerardo. It is unlikely they would have reached a flame district without it. Mm. Sharpie scrolled to a camera positioned within the elevator, face tense and lip bitten. Reaching a hoof forward, she tapped once. Fast forward. In a flash, the doors were open and three pony-shaped whirls of color were outside. She swiped it back to speed, just in time to see Maple and Starlight step in, followed by a guard. Giardo's beak clenched as the door slid shut and the elevator rose. The ponies were close enough to the camera to get a better look despite the resolution. Maple's face was split between shock, worry, and relief, and she was panting. Starlight, to her side, was completely blank. I don't remember assigning him to a patrol route involving that room, Selma sniffed. It seems this system catches slackers even when it's being used for other purposes. They continued watching silently as the elevator rose, until it suddenly stopped and opened, the guard punching a panel rapidly as the lights turned right around them. What? Giordo leaned closer, squinting as Maple and Starlight rapidly, unhappily, shuffled out of the elevator, its door closing behind them. The guard remained inside and abruptly began to descend. He's responding to last night's invasion, Selma said with a shrug, toned bored and dour. Gerardo's beak dropped. An invasion? Forgive me, but what exactly does that entail? I was under the impression that your defenses were more of a deterrent than for actual combat. Usually. Selma straightened his back, turning to glance at the exit. Last night was an exception. The Sosan commander, alone, entered my fortress and attacked the good defenders of the Stone District. Eventually, she was overwhelmed by her numbers and forced to flee. I imagine you will be taking your investigation and looking into this unusual event? That, Jardo said, standing up, sounds like an excellent plan moving forward. After all, I am in no hurry whatsoever. Lead away, if you please. End of chapter 120